Hi everyone, in this tutorial I am going to go over the steps involved in reading and grading a Borrelia immunofluorescence assay slide. This video is best viewed in high definition, preferably 1080 HD. If that option is not available, 720 HD will work too. If your video player is not set up to play in HD, please take this time to adjust it as it will improve the image resolution significantly. Now on to the video. I hope you find the following information helpful. To begin, you must ensure that you have the proper setup. For this test, we use a 40x objective combined with 10x eyepieces for a total magnification of 400x. You should make sure that you have either a LED fluorescent unit or a mercury-powered fluorescent unit with custom filters. For this tutorial, we will be using the LED fluorescent unit with custom filters, but all the information will be the same if you are using a mercury bulb too. If anything, the field may have a better contrast. With the LED unit, ensure that both of the power switches are turned on. If your unit has more than one filter, you should also check to see that the slider is set to the blue filter. This will ensure that you will see a green excitation when looking through the eyepieces. When you are obtaining your samples, first ensure that the IFA substrate slide is no more than one year old. For the purposes of this video, we will be using a 12-well glass slide and our substrate is deactivated Borrelia burdoferi culture that was grown in liquid media. Additionally, you must also make sure that your patient serum is no more than 14 days old and you should also make sure that it has been stored properly at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius for the entirety of the time. Once the assay has been performed, the slides need to be stored in the dark until reading time in order to mitigate photo bleaching. It is best to read the slide within 48 hours. To give a brief background so you know what you will be looking at, for this test what you will be doing is reading this, which represents an anti-IgG or IgM fluorescin labeled goat anti-human secondary antibody. That secondary antibody will be bound to this primary antibody from the patient serum, and that antibody will be bound to the substrate that contains the antigen. Again, in our case, it is Borrelia burdoferi culture. However, this test will detect any organism in the Borrelia genus. When you look into the microscope, you will see a green excitation of the secondary antibody. The signal intensity of the spirochetes is what you're going to be grading. The substrate slides have an equal amount of deactivated Borrelia burdoferi culture in each well. To screen patients, you can test up to 10 samples per slide with one positive control and one negative control. If the screen of the specimen is positive, a serial dilution should be performed. Here is a summary table of how to interpret the grades of IFA samples that have been serially diluted across six wells. Of course, the number of total dilutions can be adjusted depending on the sample. For example, if you have a very high positive, you may have to go beyond the 6 dilution to get an endpoint. To be considered negative for IgG, a sample must be negative at the 1 to 40 dilution ratio and lower. If a sample reads as a 1 plus at 1 to 40, however, and it is negative at all lower dilutions, this is considered an indeterminate result, and the sample should be repeated until a result can be determined. If a sample is more than 1 plus, meaning it's 2 plus, 3 plus, or 4 plus, at the 1 to 40 dilution, even if it is negative for all other dilutions, this is considered a positive result. Now I'll go on to the IgM interpretation table. To be considered negative for IgM, a sample must be negative at the 1 to 20 ratio and lower. However, if a sample is a 1 plus at 1 to 20 and is negative at all lower dilutions, this is what is considered an indeterminate result for IgM. And again, similar to IgG, if a sample is more than 1 plus at the 1 to 20 dilution, even if it is negative for all other dilutions, it is considered a positive result. You may be wondering, how does one grade the degree of fluorescence on an IFA slide from 1 plus to 4 plus? Here is a summary of the IFA grading table. Remember, with this test, you are grading the intensity of the signal. Naturally, that makes the grading of the brightness somewhat subjective because the signal intensity is something that cannot be precisely quantified by a microscopist. One way that helps to standardize grading is to compare the brightness to the endpoint of the positive control. For example, if the endpoint of the positive control is the 1 to 1280 dilution, a 2 plus would be comparable to the 1 to 640 dilution of the positive control and so on. 
I should also note that if the grades for the dilutions are not linear, there may be a possible technical error, and it is up to your institution whether to repeat the sample or not. Now we will go over how to efficiently and effectively scan the slide wells in order to maximize accuracy. Since each well is only 6 mm in diameter, it is fairly easy to scan the entire well, and that is what we suggest doing. Just make sure that you scan at least 10 fields before determining a grade for the sample. Start at one edge of the well and scan down until you reach the other edge. Then shift the field view over and scan up again towards the edge and repeat. Now I will show some footage so you can see what to look for in a positive sample. It may help to view this footage in a dark room if you are having trouble seeing the signals. I will denote selected true signals with green circles and some artifacts in red. This is an example of a 4 plus IFA sample at the 1 to 40 dilution. You will mostly be looking for spirochetes that are usually helical, slender, and long. Borrelia burgdorferi, however, may also appear in other forms, for example, cyst forms or granules. Just as a reminder, here is the grading table's description of what a 4 plus signal looks like. The spirochete should be very bright and clearly distinguishable. For example, here is a 4 plus sample with a cluster of spirochetes. Although this video footage may look less bright than when looking through the microscope, there are long single spirochetes that can be clearly seen in this field too. In contrast to the 4 plus sample, here is an example of a 1 plus signal. As you can see, the signal intensity is a lot dimmer. However, just as the grading table describes, you can still differentiate the spirochetes from the background. This is an example of a 3 plus signal. You can clearly see the spirochetes spread evenly throughout. The signal is much brighter than the 1 plus, but not as bright as it could be in the case of a 4 plus signal. Notice how Borrelia is extracellular, and how its morphology allows it to twist using its periplasmic flagella. Since there are far too many spirochetes to circle, just looking inside this orange box, here are some nice spirochetes I am circling in green. Okay, well that's it for this video tutorial. Please do not hesitate to contact us via phone or email. We will do our best to guide you, and if necessary, can arrange a training. If you happen to have time, there is also a brief 10-question customer feedback survey on our webpage that we would so appreciate if you completed. The feedback helps us very much in figuring out how to serve your needs better. Thank you for watching!